Welcome to the In My Opinion Show with Ronald Barrington Robinson and Friends. Seen on the internet 24 hours, 7 days a week. Please join us. Uh, also, I want to introduce our, uh, our co-host, Ms. Jackie Williams. Happy New Year, fellas. Happy New Year, Jackie. Happy New Year. And Mr. Uh, Henry Hatter. Happy New Year, Ron and Jackie. And ha Happy New Year to everyone out there in uh, uh, TV land. Hope everybody had a wonderful uh, 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 time. Let's talk about something that's really horrible in my opinion. All right. Trump puts children in cages. This is so appalling. When I seen this, I had tears coming to my eyes. Okay? These are human beings and they're being treated like dogs. Okay? And I'm sure millions of our viewers out there have seen uh, uh, pictures of this of this of this of this horrendous act. How in good conscience could uh, the President of the United States put these children in cages, separate them from their families, they've got them scattered all over the country, and many of them, some of them have already been adopted. Now, how inhumane is that? They may not ever see uh, their, their loved ones again, okay? I, I just don't understand it. Um, have, have we brought to the nation to this decay, and that's what it is, it's decay of people's uh, rights and, and, you know, and humanity. Jackie, I'm sure that you've seen some of these scenes, all right, where they got them packed in these cages, okay, they got some little silver stuff covering them for, you know, uh, for, for blankets, and, and, and they're just packed in there like, you know, like, like, like sardines. This is horrible, horrible. Well, um, I have, um, and as a mother, it really breaks my heart because um, we're caretakers and to see your children go through so much. And when you come to the United States, you're trying to get away from the dysfunction of where you're coming from. And I'm not saying everybody that comes is under a good standing, but the people that they said are showing up at the border is more like mothers and children. And of course you have some sprinkle of some um, people that need to stay where they're at. Where they're at. But um, I was listening to an interview of the Secretary of Homeland Security, which is Christine Nelson, and she was um, speaking with a doctor. And what is found is that the facilities that were holding them in was not made for children. It was made for men. Um, they have not been upgraded. They were made for men because the standards of which they um, operate. Um, one of the things that they were concerned about for children is that there's open toilets. Um, there's no concealment and that's where the germs are coming from. There's not enough medical staff um, and the lights stay on 24 hours a day. So that's very disarming to children because they don't know when they rest or whatever and they're not being let out in a good time. And the other thing is that they're having um, unprepared staff or under skilled staff um, oversee them and they've had a lot of inside issues where you had some people that were molesting um, they've brought charges to one that was shooting people that weren't even um, in danger or danger to them so it's just a really big dis dysfunction on the part of the United States so it doesn't fall on the shoulders of Donald Trump it falls on the tr um, shoulders of all of us because we're allowing it to happen and it's still going on and even though a lot of the children were unified by with their families there's still a lot that went back to their countries and so they like you said they don't speak a lot of English and a lot of them will never see their parents again because it's hard to locate them because they weren't gathering data as they were coming over. So there are several issues that are going to plague. And she said, this is mental for children. This is very mentally uh, disabling for children because being detached from your parents and also being in a strange land by yourself undergoing these circumstances. And also, too, uh, with this situation going on, this is a hotbed for terrorists. 
all right? When these children, they will grow up, okay? And they will have these memories. Yeah. And, and, and it'll be directed at the United States. Uh, there's other things that, that, that the United States government could do, okay? They could go over to these countries, all right? Have a workable plan in terms of jobs and schooling and so forth. The government knew about all of this years ago, okay? They knew this was coming. That's why they have these think tanks. They knew it was coming. They should have been proactive, okay? These are human beings, these are God's children. And you don't do this, you don't do this uh, to these people. This is the same thing as what Hitler did, okay? But only, uh, uh, they put them in furnaces mm. and killed them. Thank God this is not happening here, but there's all, already been some children that have died, okay, uh, uh, coming from, um, from uh, South America. This is, this is cruel and unusual punishment at its worst. Mr. Hedder? Thank you. <coughs> all right, <coughs> Jackie, what do you say? It's difficult for me to refute. I believe what you say. It is a terrible thing to see children suffer under these circumstances. But by the same token, I'm not going to give you a political response because you know what a political response is. It's just tit for tat. Right. But I want to talk about something that's reasonable. And the reason these kids are in this predicament is because people are pushing them on us. Uh, there's a process that you use for any nation in the world, and they all agree that they have boundaries around, and they have, uh, they're sovereign. You don't come into their countries unless you're invited, or you're permitted through some process. In this case, we, there has been evidence shown that people are throwing kids out there to put them in these circumstances, and, and the cages are not there to punish the kids, but it's to contain them until they figure out what to do. And it takes a process to find out what to do. They take legal parameters, and we're a legal nation with laws and, uh, and rules that we have to follow in that process. In this case, uh, I think that this is a ploy that someone is putting on the United States, and the United States is buying it. Uh, we cannot take everybody into this country and, uh, and maintain stability in our own population because of all the things that the country has to deal with. Crime, drugs, employment, etc. And anybody who wants to come in this country, and I welcome them, and we cannot do without foreigners. That's right. We cannot do without immigrants. I hope everybody understands that because nothing a lot of our processes won't get done without the immigrants. Right. But we want them to come in legally. We want them to come in, we'd like to have the most educated of them to come in. But, but is at that least fair? With a, with a, is that fair? From our perspective it is. Uh, we have a, a nation that requires a lot on education. We were, we were conceived as an intellectual nation. And we try to bring everybody up to that form. Everybody doesn't want to get there to be intellectual. Everybody doesn't want to follow the law. But we have to aspire to that. Sure, we want the people. But we also, on the other side, we want people who come in and contribute to our economy. Not drag on it. Not suck away its nutrients. But people who contribute to the nation. We want Americans who were born here to do the same thing. But it's difficult to do that. For our because, own to do it. Yeah, it's difficult for our right. own people because they think that all foreigners, those people are the ones that you step on. They don't. They work for less. 
uh, they that we have less value. But I'm glad so, you said that because the um, misinformation is they're taking our jobs. They're not taking our jobs because I don't want to pick corn. I mean, no. they do a lot of stuff that Americans are not trying to do. So that's false information. You're not taking jobs that we want to do. They're doing jobs that we just leave because, you know, people say, well, there's no jobs. Well, there's jobs you just don't want to do. Yeah, now who who's fault in that? Now we have to find out who do we blame for this? Do we blame ourselves or do we blame the people coming in? You know, there's something. There's a discussion we need to have at the table to reconcile where we are and what should be done next. And I don't say that the process that the president is using right now is the best process, but we have to talk ourselves through that. And he has no, until Americans agree that we have a place for all of the people who want to come in here, uh, we have settled nothing. But do we have a treaty with them? Is that correct? Um, I was listening, I was watching a documentary, and it's like we have a treaty that if they come over to seek asylum, we have... Yeah, that's worldwide. Okay, that's so worldwide. my point is, these people are seeking asylum. Yeah. Until they have their day in court, we can't judge what their situation yes, we can. is. We, no, we cannot. You don't, you don't come across the border. No, you but don't I'm saying... invade the country. I'm not this saying to invade. Nation. Yeah, I'm not saying to invade. A sovereign nation. Yes. That's, the, that's what's being... That's causing the conflict. People are coming in without going through the process. But it's a lot of people that can't even get through doing the process because as Sessions was in office, he took that if you were um, domestic violence, you couldn't seek asylum. Mm -hmm. How are you going to tell somebody that that's not bad situations? You don't get to give them their day in court before they get to court. So you don't get to rule outside of what our treaty, and they said it was a violation of our treaty because it says until they have their day in court. So now what has happened is they're um, postponing all of these trials. They don't have enough judges. They don't have enough courts. They don't Whose have fault is that? We cannot There's go some through a process. We've never had this problem the, before. Okay, then uh, we have to deal with it the way it is. It's the, spin, it's the spin masters out there that's creating the havoc here, okay? The spin masters, whether it's the news, TV, uh, 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 print news, okay? Uh, different, uh, uh, like Fox News, okay? A lot of this stuff is, yeah, I is lies. I agree. All right? And may I say this what I'm thinking about? I noticed that you and Ron had bleeding hearts to begin with about these kids being in these terrible situations. They're bloody, they uh, have colds, they're exposed to germs and stuff like that. But I want to remember, I said I wouldn't be political, but for a moment I'm, I'm going to be political. Imagine that. I remember uh, <laughs> in 1620 when they had the first boatload of slaves come in. They were packed in those boats like sardines, and many of them died. Right. 16, hang on, hang it on. It was 1619, and, and, and there was uh, only 19 of them. By one year. Okay. I, I've hit the area that I need to be in. But my point is, nobody bled for them. And you said, well, these kids will become terrorists. They will remember. I don't remember any of that. But you don't. But yeah. you cannot I don't speak on behalf my of all the black slash, Afro American yeah, okay. slash. Don't intend to. Well, I'm just saying, before you step out there, make sure you understand that I that's said how it. you feel. I said, and I'll say I it got now. a lot of angry black people uh, that's okay. are still angry. Right. So I'm saying you might not have felt that way because your body you was far still, removed. You, you can still be angry. But I'm but saying. But you will solve nothing but bloodshed. And I understand it, but it wasn't, but this is the thing I'm saying. Compassion should run through our veins because this is something that, um. What was the compassion in 1619? I can't worry about okay. that. Okay. But I'm, I'm uh, accountable for right now. Okay, now you're speaking out of both sides of your mouth. No, no, I'm not, I'm just going to tell you. For the other. No, I'm saying I can't do anything about slavery back then. I don't want to live in the past because I can't drive backwards, but I can okay. drive forward and I can put it in drive. So what I'm saying is the compassion that they should have had for us when we were in slavery, I have for them because I understand 
how the sweat and tears of them trying to get a better life for their families. However, I do believe in processes. And so I'm not saying I want you to jump over the wall. I want you to dig under the wall. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if they go through, because the, they change the entrance several times to confuse them. If they, you know, because it's just a whole they change way. it to confuse them or to try to rectify the situation at that moment. No, it, it no. Then you know all of that. You have already done your investigation. Yeah, I did. Yeah, and and okay. they said they changed I stand it correctly. because they they interviewed them and they said that where they normally enter to get asylum, they changed it and they wouldn't let them seek asylum. They turned them away. So now your president is sending them to Mexico. It's the president of the United States, please. It's our president, Trump. not yours. Trump, right? Trump is sending them to Mexico until he's ready to receive them and then falsifying information saying that they worked out something. The president said they didn't work out anything. Well, see, We have to be you, honest in order to fix it. See, you have more information on that than I do because I don't have any information. Yeah, they were sending them back to, they are sending them to Mexico to hold, like a holding and they were like, we can't hold them. It's not fair to them. That's not what we've ever done. We've never had this problem before, so then let's get back to the root of the problem. It's because we don't want people over here that don't look like some of us. No, that has nothing to do with yes, it. it does. it does. We, have to de we have to use those people. Immigrants are very important. I'll say that again, folks. Yeah, of course they are. They are Absolutely. important to the United and States. And they're important and we will to the President of the United States. And we will. And because we'll all, he employ them. After she's done, I'll finish. Yeah. I, but after... <laughs> Uh, we will always welcome immigrants into this country because we can't do without them. We should. Yeah, we should. Okay. I don't know what that means. You know, uh, 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 Trump uh, had his in-laws. Uh, uh, they were for, they were immigrants. They, but they my argument in. is sovereignty. But mine it is too. It has nothing to do with anything else except sovereignty. Mine All too. All I'm saying is, I just think if they're coming in and they're coming in the right way, then you need to give them due process. What's the right way? To seek asylum. They, okay. They're coming in to seek what asylum. About, what do you put your emphasis on? Sovereignty or asylum? Whichever one is on. No, because if they're coming in and they're following the rules that we have and they're seeking asylum, we need to give them their day Where, where do you put your emphasis? The status of who's coming because no, it can't be a blanket. It's got to be sovereignty. You can't invade our country. What about all of the people that, that have... They that, invaded that, that, Africa. ...that have lived okay. in the United States, okay. okay? What about all the people that have lived in the United States, okay? Even ones that have sacrificed their lives or, or, or been to... or fighting for America. What has Trump done? Shot them out of... told them to get out of the country. Now, that wasn't right. That's not right either. Thousands. Military okay. people that's well, serving in the military. If, if they... Uh, no, we don't... But he's no, done no, that. Henry, people that are serving in the military that are not citizens, he rejected them and okay. they had to leave. And well, they're fighting for that us. Fits the, exactly. That fits that fits the framework for people who should be serving in the military. You must give your allegiance. You must They did fulfill, hang on, you must say fulfill all of the requirements for citizenship and for induction into the military. Well, that and was, and they've done all of left. that. Oh, no, I'm not sure about that. Okay. If they were illegal, have, you ever, have you ever been in the if service? If they were li illegals. Have you, ever been, they, have you ever been in the service? I was only in uh, ROTC. Oh, okay, okay. You didn't, I didn't even do that. Okay, you didn't have no foot spurs no, or nothing. No. <laughs> okay, no, look, did you know... But all joking aside, that's not right. These men and women... Have been over some of them two or three uh, tours of duty, okay, putting their lives on the line, okay. They come back. They were promised. Promised, okay. They, the, you know, citizenship. They come back, and it's a bus waiting for them to go across the Rio Grande. Okay, that's no, probably that's, that's wrong, huh? If the facts yeah, are right, that's you're, yeah, that's you're right. That's fact. Only if the facts are right. But if people came into the United States and it was inducted into the military through a bunch of lies. Absolutely, get rid of Why would they be lies? No, uh, if they were, they're going to get a background when you go into the service. I don't know. No, we, we can come back. With, we can come back with the ex, um, the exact details because they had like a whole details. documentary about how we have people serving in the military that are not citizens, but they were promised citizenship and they were denied under the Trump administration. Well, if they came in and inducted into the yeah. uh, by yeah. the framework of the yeah. United States military. 
I support them. Yeah, because why else but would they you, serve? If you him? said I was a citizen when I was inducted in, you have falsified your record. That's how they got out. That's how they were able to pinpoint them. It's because they knew it was several of them serving and they were not citizens and they were promised to be citizens. Yeah, but that, what precedes the promise of citizenship? You have to follow the right framework and it's got to be truthful and forthright. I think what it was is that it wasn't a process written and so we went The military has always had a process. It wasn't the military that made the call. Well, who? It was the um, Attorney General. Sessions. Yeah, but the, it, yeah. It, was, it was Sessions that did it. We're talking two different things. Can I focus on the military for a second? Mm -hmm. The military is supposed to have people born and give loyalty to this country through a process, an oath of office. And everything they say in the application is the truth. For example, it wasn't like 1941 when black soldiers entered because they were, you know, they all were, they were already condemned. Right. But but see, but they what were born condemned. Here. But they, they were, were put on the front. Hmm? Yeah. Put oh, on the there front. Are a lot of ways. Yeah, they didn't yeah. give them the proper weapons. Yeah. They yeah. put them on the front. I'm right. not going to talk about it. It's not right now. We need to talk about that. But we're talking about Thank immigrants. You. Right. Uh, so uh, in this case, I think that if immigrants came into this country and they lied on the application to the Army and you had to go through that process, I would say that is um, uh, that needs more investigation. And I understand that, but I'm saying these are people that they knew were immigrants. That's how we were able to pinpoint them, because they knew that they were immigrants, but they were serving. You'd be surprised how big the number is, Henry. Yeah, but you still miss the point. The point is, what kind of application did they file when they went to the Army? I am not in the military. I'm just telling uh, you what the okay. documentary said. I don't know. I've they, never been in the military. Believe me, they, they, did a, they did a background check on these people, okay, and that went into the service. I've been there and done that. Yeah, All but right? look, they can do a background check, but on your military records when you go in, they say, where are you born? Well, Flint, Michigan. Uh, what date were you born? But you have to where process you go to documents. High now, look, this is the process. Even when you went in, that was the process. If you were born in Istanbul or South America someplace uh, and not here, and you said you were born here on your military record, that's a lie. Of course it is. But if you and have a background, even, I think, you know that. I think well, let's get even. let's get back to these, these these children in you know children in cages. Okay, now. If I was in South America, okay, and I was scared for my family, all right, uh, with all of this rhetoric, rhetoric that you hear about violence and drugs and this and that what not, all right. Now, I would be, I would be, I, I would be doing, I would be on that walk too, on that march, all right, for a better life for my family. And I think you would be too, Henry yes, I would. and Jackie. Right. You would be too. Yeah. Okay, for the, you know, for for the future of our children. And might like to get in for the same reason that these people. You know what I mean? See? Survival of the fittest. I'm not saying that it's uh, they they were wrong in trying, but they got caught and they broke the rules. Well, the international rule. Did you not know that immigration is down lowest as it's ever been? Yes. It's not a state of emergency right now. It's not because the numbers are much lower than they've ever been. So my point is for you to make this a 911, not you in stating you, I'm saying as the, under the Trump administration, to make this a 911, it's not. We created the situation we, we have because we retain people we generally don't retain. Again, we're talking about sovereignty. It no. all boils back to sovereignty. No. Well, we're also Both. talking about, sure we're also talking about life and death situations. Audience, if, it, if, it in, if it involves sovereignty, they would probably more than likely say yes. No. 
there are other things wrong in the world, but See, we, and first. we have treaties with those with those uh, with those. So other let's 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 go there. So America. let's break down sovereignty because I, I like to do this too, Henry. Let's go there. So sovereignty is the authority of state to govern itself, and you know to govern itself. So it doesn't mean to be wrong to other people. It just said to govern itself. If we have treaties with other countries, we need to honor those. We cannot live as an island where we only protect the United States because that's what we're doing. We're worried about the United. United States, but we have allies that we have made treaties with where we're working together. We can't just abandon ship because we decided that we don't like the browning of America. Let's tell you the truth. We don't like the browning of America. We're nervous, so we're retaining people. We're making them uncomfortable. We're trying to scare them so they don't want to come here to seek a better life. We only can be, uh, we cannot judge where they're coming from because we're not there. We only can imagine the, the situations are as bad as they are. You're stepping into deep water. Well, let's step on deep water. Which is, we're talking about sovereignty, and sovereignty supersedes everything else. I don't think so. Because sovereignty helps us to maintain internal stability. But if, if you break down sovereignty and let everybody come in, you have, you have no process of governance at all. I never You're said given. to do that. But but even if we have agreements with other people, it takes a process to perform all of All I'm saying is go through the process. Don't overlook the process. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, up, uh, I'm not combating the yeah, process. Yeah, so we're actually on the but same team. Smile, Henry, we're on the I, same team. Smile. I, I'm defending. I understand that, but what I'm saying is we're on, the, yeah, <laughs> we're on the same team. I'm not saying, all I'm saying is go through the process. We made a process. We're on the same table. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm not very often, so let's let's go ahead. And, okay. Okay. <laughs> but what I'm saying is there is a process, and we need to use the process that we have in order for it to work. We cannot cut steps out I, to try to defend ourselves and make up stuff that's not true. And I know that people know that you're a formidable argumenter, <laughs> and I am doing well to uh, get you to say that we're on the same side. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year, um, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> but also, along with sovereignty, don't you have to have humanity too? Compassion. Yeah. And compassion. Yeah. You, all of that. And weighs empathy. In. All of okay. that. Okay. Because I know when I see, you know, all of these children, all right, some newborn babies. Okay. Strangers taking care of them. They should be with their mothers. Not just right. strangers, but they have a video, Henry. I, I, I'm, a, I'm going to send you some information so you can see all the mishaps that's going on inside of these facilities because they have a video of a young man, several, that are dragging the children and the children are crying and he's just, because they're tired of them because they haven't been properly trained. They have no um, type of patience because these children are crying all the time because they're miserable. And so we have, um, again, unskilled workers working in this and they're getting paid. I mean, we have moved so much money to pay them, but we're not getting qualified staff members. And as the pediatrician said, the two children that died at the border, do you know what they had? They had the flu. Yeah, I read that. But, you know, I... Uh -uh, let's not skip over that. Let's not skip over that. If you had proper medical facilities at the border, like we've always had, we're so understaffed in the federal government and the state, we don't have proper people in the right places. Had we had the proper staff, two children could have been treated for the flu and still be with us. But to use children as pawns between political entities is wrong. That's not your right. president. Yeah. Yeah. Your president the is president doing of that. The United States. Trump administration. Okay. Now, um, but that's wrong to use children. Who is doing this? Is people? How is he using a, children when they're people, there? I, I'll wait until you finish. Go ahead, Henry. It's people who have a political interest in this matter. They don't care about the outcomes, whether they are favorable to the country, uh, to the uh, people who are victims, or not. They they want to achieve some other goals that's not on the table. And I'm not sure always that you want to use children as as so as, who's profiting as from those children? Who's as, profiting from who, the children? As scapegoats. 
to uh, solve your problem or to answer a question. Okay. They should never be used. That's okay. right. But at this time, we must bring the In My Opinion shows to a close. Hope you, hope you folks out there and will enjoy this uh, information uh, that we've, that we've uh, supplied. Until next time, this is Ronald Barrington Robinson and friends saying stay focused.